All right guys, so now that we have our first API server up and running, let's go ahead and build our metadata scrapper service. So one of the first things we are going to need to keep in mind is that what you're going to be doing is basically we are going to be reaching out to a web page like this. So if I can go to view page source, we are going to be looking for things like the title, the description, the keywords, the author, so the, the description, the image or the icon if available and then we are going to be sending them back to the user. So it's important to note that normally when writing HTML in the head tags, the description and the and the title will most of the times be set, but sometimes they might not be set. So when they are not set, we are also going to be looking at the open graph metadata. So for the most part, when you're building a website and you're optimizing for SEO, you're going to have to provide the, the open graph metadata. So when we find that a property doesn't exist normally in the HTML, like I think this website doesn't have the open graph uh, tags, we'll be looking into the open graph tags and see if we can find it there. So if we don't find this, I also want to mention that, that there are Twitter cards. So most of the times when you define your website, you need to provide the Twitter card content. So this metadata here, so you can see for them they are defined using the Twitter keyword and then the basically the resource so we we'll, so we'll be looking here if we don't find it let's say we're looking for a description if we don't find it here we look in this or we look in the Twitter card definitions so we can make sure that at all time we minimize the chances of not returning a value for a single property okay so let's get started so this was used to see how to set up a server with, with the re, with reload enabled so i'm going to remove this then i'm going to set up a, a route that will receive a post request so here what i can do is i can do app dot you guessed it post so we can say something like scrap tags okay so that's so when a user makes a request to scrap tags what we want to do is we want we want to handle it so let's call it scrap tags. And in here, now we need to do some few things. One of them is we're going to need to make a request to the web page that they send us. And also we are going to need to, we're going to need to pass that web page when it is sent. So we're going to be using beautiful soup. So if you don't have beautiful soup, please install it. So you install it by installing BS4. So you do pip3 install BS4. That's so going to go ahead and install your beautiful soup. So you can see that for me, I already have it. Then after install request, in install requests. So pip3 install requests like this. I also already have it, so it's gonna go quick. So after you do that, then we can import them. So we wanna import requests. Then we want to import, so from BS4, import beautiful soup beautiful soup so here when a user makes the post request of course they are going to be sending us the url so for us to be able to access the url we are going to need to first set up a, a data model so then we set up a data model here is here we can set up a class so let's say it's going to be like a url so let's call this class url so, so it's going to be url and then it's going to be inheriting from something from pydantic so this so it's going to be inheriting from base model so we need to import base model from pydantic so from pydantic pydantic import base model so this gets installed gets in, so this gets installed when you install first api okay so now we can define our attributes so if this was a class with many attributes you would have them but now we don't have a lot so we can have like url so you define url so you define the key and then you have to define its type. So Pydantic has all the types, all the primitive types in Python, so you can use those, but also it has some other types. So the one you're gonna be using is HTTP URL. So we want to make sure that the URL that the user sends us is validated to be a URL. Okay, cool. So when we run the function like this, now we can pass in our data model. So the way we pass in the data model is we're going to need to pass our class so this is gonna be URL like that. And now in here, we can access all the properties of what is sent. So here we can actually do something like return URL. So if we do something like this, and then we go to our postman and make a request to scrap tags. So let me first make sure the server is up. Okay, so it's up. So if we come back to postman and make a request to port 4200, so it's gonna be one two seven 
zero zero one port forty two hundred. It's gonna be a post request. So let's do that. So post. So this one is going to slash scrap tags. So slash scrap tags. So you can see that we are getting the validation up front. And this is because we defined the data model class here. So what we're going to need to do here is we're going to now supply the, the URL. So let's say we come over here and do this. So let's supply JSON. Then we want to send URL. And then let's do something like that. So if we send this, you notice that we get the validations. So we are getting all the things for free. We are not validating this at all. This is being handled by our data model class. And of course, it's using things from Pydantic. Oh, okay, so let's now supply something like google.com. So HTTP, which is correct. Uh, google.com. Okay, so I think it should even be an HTTP. Yes. Okay, looking good. So send that. Now you can see that we send it back. Anyway, so what we want to do here is make a request to this. And by the way, if I made a PDB here, so if I do a PDB, and then we inspect this, so if I send it, so here, if we look at URL, URL, you notice that it's not just a string. This is a, an instance of a class. So what we need to do is we need to get out the, we need to turn it into a string and get out the URL. We need to get out the URL and turn it into a string. So that's going to be something like URL.URL, .URL, which still is an HTTP URL. But then when we turn it into a string like this, now we can get a string we can make a request to. So right here, what we want to do is get user request. So we can define something like page equals request get so we want to be getting the this which just so so url dot url so if this class had many properties you would be doing something like url dot something but now we're doing url dot url that's why these are similar okay so this should actually be able to make our get request and return for us the result so now what we need to do is pass that result to something that we can work with using beautiful soup so here we can do something like soup equals beautiful soup so when you instantiate beautiful soup you need to give it what you want to to pass so we are going to be passing page the text and then we want to be using a parser for html because we are dealing with html so here you pass html dot parser like that okay so now we have the soup here i can do a pdb to see what we have in the soup so so we can see pdb is still running here i can stop it so the server continues so now if I came and made another request like this, it's gonna first make the request and then it's posted in the VDB. So if we do soup, you see that we have the basically the result. So here you can do soup dot head to see what we have in the head. And now you can see that we are accessing the, the contents of the page. Okay, so first thing, let's first try to see if we can return the title. So here in the return, instead of us returning this URL, we are gonna have to return the title like that. And then I'm gonna have a function called get title. So let's create this. So here we can actually have it in here. So def get title. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we are going to be reaching out for first of all, we are going to first see if this is included in here. So like this. So you see this is the title tag. So now to be able to do that using beautiful soup, we can do soup dot head because it's in the head, and then we can do dot find which returns one or none. So dot find. So now we are going to be finding the title. And then when we get the title and we want to pick the value, we do dot text. Okay, so so now we can actually return this. Let's add a return here. And then try again. Let me remove the PDB so we just see it's working. So when we make the request, it's gonna go ahead and yeah, you can see that now it scraps and brings us the title on the page. So sometimes this might not be defined. So you want to make sure before you do the text, this is there. So here we can actually make sure that we don't do the text when it's not there. So you can do an if it is there, then else it should return none. But this is just for validation so our program doesn't crash. 
So let's see how we can get the description. So here we can do description. So let me also have the get description. And the reason why I'm making them a fun if and the reason why I'm making them functions is because sometimes we we can need to look look through many things. So if it's defined as a function, it can be easier to read. So get description will basically be looking out for so like here if we do description you can see that it is in meta and then the attribute is name and then the value is, is description so what we want to do is come over here and then do soup dot head because it's in the head then we do dot find so we're going to be finding a meta tag and then we can specify more options so we are going to be looking into the attributes so we are going to be looking for the attribute which name is the description like that okay so this will give us basically the the meta tag but what we want is not the meta tag we want to get the content of the meta tag so here you can do dot get content okay like that so let's make sure we are returning it like that so now if we make another request we see that it crashes and the reason why it crashes is because this is not there so we also want to make sure we have it before we do a dot get okay like that uh so oh so we want to do if is there else none else return none. So we are returning none if it's not there or returning it if it's there. So if we send another request, you see that we didn't get it. So how about if it's available somewhere else? So let's say now it's defined. Let's say now on the site, they defined like an OG description. So what we want to do is set this one to a value. We can do something like main description, main description, and then set it to that. Then we can also get the OG value, the OG description. So this one, we want to be able to look out for this tag, a tag that looks like this. So something like OG and then description. So you see this one is not using the, the attribute for name. So we can get this one using the, the property. We can select it by property and then we pick the content. Okay, so the way we do that is here, of course, we do soup.find. So soup.find. So we are going to be finding in the meta. So meta. And then what we need to do is we select by property. So property. So the property is going to be OG description, not like that. So you see, it has to be OG full parent description like that. Okay, so OG description. Okay, so here we are going to need to get the content still because you see what you get here is just a tag. So if you want to select the content is here, you do a dot get and then you want to do content. But before you do a dot get, make sure that this returned a value. So here you can do an if that's there, else also do none. Okay, so in here you can now return, return main description or OG description or none. So what this will mean is if it finds it here, if this is a, a truthy value, it's going to return it. If it's not there, it's going to try returning this. If it's none, then it's going to try returning this. So here we have an issue. What is it? Line 38. Oh, this should not be there. Okay, so let's try it. I believe Google doesn't have that one still, but we can try another website. See, still they don't have it, but if you try like um, GitHub, let's try that. You can see that GitHub provides it. Okay, good. So actually let's do the keywords one. When writing HTML, we always specify the keywords using the name and then we provide the content. So we use the attribute name and then the value will be keywords and then the 
content will be the keywords we want to now get. So if we come back over here, we are going to need to do the same thing we did for the... Hmm. Yes, we are going to need to do the same thing we did here. So I'm going to have another function called get keywords. Let me have it here. So it's going to be get keywords. Actually, I'm going to repress here keywords like that. Of course, that need to be main. Then we need to return it. So keywords don't have the open graph specifications or the Twitter card specifications. So this would be okay. So we will do meta then we get for the atras equals keywords let's take a look except yeah so that should do so if you come back here and make another request oh we need to return it yeah so here we need to go in our return and make sure we are returning the keywords gonna be get keywords okay like that so if you come back over here, try the same link. See the, the keywords are not there. So if you try something like Yahoo, send. Yeah, so you see this one has the keywords. So the last thing, let's try to see is if we can get a preview image. Because for the most part, when you share a link on, on the internet, you get like that image preview. So the way they get that is sometimes they use the favicon or sometimes they use the OG image. So here we can have image. So image, let's have get image. So image will most likely be defined in the OG, in the open graph specifications. So def get image. So that's what we're gonna look now, but feel free to look in, in the Twitter tags and use this, the very syntax we are using here and then return any of them like this. So for now, I'm gonna have this. So here we will be looking into the OG so basically, we will need to do something like this. Where is the OG? OG description. Yeah, something like this. Yeah, so we're going to return soup find. We want to be finding OG image. Like that. Okay, so now if we make another request to this, send. You notice that we get the image, so here can do this. If I put in something like github.com slash my username, and then I sent. You notice that we got the URL, you get the image for the Yahoo. And now if I do the GitHub one, you can see that you get the picture. So yeah, so this is gonna be it. I know the second part didn't have a lot to do with fast API. But first off, we can. I hope we can see how we can achieve like validations. And of course, there are many things that are possible that are possible with Fast API. So maybe if this video gets some traction, I'm gonna be looking into making more videos on Fast API. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.